some table manners or granny ain't gonna let him eat in her kitchen. I'd a heap rather have him eating in my kitchen than that big, overgrown, lazy, good-for-nothing Leif Crick. Now, granny, don't start on Leif again. He's gone, he's on his way back to the hill. He don't live in the hills. He lives in the gully. And it's his kind that gives the hill people a bad name. <laughs> he's on his way back to the gully and his daughter with him. Now, let's forget him. Granny, don't get yourself all angered up. Who's angered up? You are. Because that Leif Crick tried to get you to marry his daughter. Ain't that right? Shucks, no. They's both gone back home. I'm the only one that has the gumption to hold a grudge. <laughs> it's a sorry thing when a poor old stove-up, wore-out, gray-haired old granny has to do all the grudge-holding in the family. <laughs> well, leave go of it, granny. Now, Leif is gone, and you can't start a fire without you got two sticks to rub together. You calling me a stick? <laughs> start in on me. Here. Have some of this scalding hot coffee. It'll cool you down. <laughs> Here we are, Mr. Crick. Ma'am, I just don't know how to thank you. A fine, beautiful young city girl like you giving a poor old hound dog like me a ride in your beautiful automobile. Nonsense, Mr. Crick. The moment you told me that you were Mr. Clabbit's nearest and dearest friend. Like that, Jed and me. Two peas in a pod. Always was. You'll be so happy that you're staying over. Missing my own daughter's wedding to do it. But I says to myself, I says, Leif, I says, if you can pleasure Jed and Granny and then youngins even that itty bitty bit by staying over here like they begged you to, you've just got to forget your own pleasure. Just like Mr. Clapper, always thinking of others. Like that, Jed and me. Two birds and a mule's tail. Always was. I wish I could stay and see this joyous reunion between two old friends, but I must be getting back to the bank. Yeah. You take good care of old Jed's money, you hear? You keep a tight hold on it now. Don't you worry, it's safe. That's comforting to know. It's comforting to know that Mr. Clampett has friends like you. I hope you can stay for a while. I'm going to try my best. You got my word. <laughs> Help me with the dishes. Help me with the dishes. And that's what you get when you deal with those gully people. Late Crick, yes, himself. I'll tell you, I've seen some things. That's the way it is. I never hung nasty trash. Jethro, I reckon we gotta let Granny blow off that head of steam she built up over Late Crick, or she's gonna be sputtering and hissing like that for weeks. <laughs> I reckon it'd pleasure her heap to cut loose and speak her mind. Granny? What do you think of Leif Crick? Why, he is the laziest, no account bomb that ever drawn a breath. Go, Granny, go. Why, the only hard work that he ever done was to turn over in bed. He can get up in the morning with nothing to do, and by nightfall, it's only half done. I see, Granny, me, Martha, I'm good. His woman does all the work over at their place, and the only time she ever got him out in the fields, she had to sharpen the stumps so he couldn't sit down. Blow the lid off, Granny. Let her fly. The only nickel he ever earned was when his pa paid him two bits to stay away from the house. <laughs> Why, he would whitewash his own ma and rent her out to haunt houses. <laughs> Why, he's so lazy, even his scarecrows have to sit in a chair. <laughs> you talk about a liar. Why, that Leif Crick, he wouldn't know the truth if he stepped on the bed of foothead. Go, Granny. He's like a catfish. All mouth, no brains. He's got whiskers like a catfish. Shifty eyed, big feet. I don't want to talk about him. No more. <laughs> That's good, Granny. Them last two wasn't much anyway. I bet you feel a heap better, don't you? I feel wonderful. And I'm gonna cook up a mess of the finest fiddles that this family ever clamped their jaws on. But Jethro and me has got some wood to cut out back. 
you later, Grant. <laughs> what you got there, Skipper? Mr. Crick. You speak to me, boy. That was me that spoke, Mr. Crick. Oh, really? I get to my feet, honey, only I'm so tired from walking all the way up here. I thought you went back home for Isabel's wedding. Oh, Ellie, darling, promise me you're never going to treat your pa the way that girl treated me. What did she do? Went away and left me stranded without no car, no money, no food, all sick and starving. <laughs> we got plenty of food, and Granny will doctor you back to hell. No, 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 honey. I don't want to burden nobody, but I would like to see your pa's face just one more time before I pass on to my reward. <laughs> now, maybe if you was to help me, I could get to my feet and make my way to the table. I, I mean, to wherever your pa is. Well, he's in the kitchen. Good. Good. <laughs> I am cooking grits and jowls, Billy boy, Billy boy. I am cooking grits and jowls, charming the Billy. And my victuals will be safe now that we is ready to lay. He's a good for nothing, low down, lazy, I'm harming. Hello, dear, sweet little old granny. What's the matter, Ray? It's Leif Crick. That good for nothing, low down, lazy, vittle stealing, liquor drinking, gully jumper. Granny, I thought you'd blow it off all that scene. I did, but he's back, and I'm commencing to boil again. Leif is back? Yes, but not for long. Give me that axe. Uh, yeah. Dead old friend. I didn't have it in mind to bother you none, but. Ellie Mae found me and then forced me to come in and have some vittles to help me get my strength back. Well, you're always welcome at our table, oh, Leif. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I ain't looking for no handout. Leif Crick ain't one to be asking for charity. No, sir, Leif Crick wants to work for what he gets. I didn't know there was two Leif Crick. <laughs> well, ain't no call for you to work, Leif, but if it make you feel any better, here's Axe. Oh. You can help Jethro yonder cut some wood. I'd be glad to. I'd be proud to do it, but I think first I'll change into my work clothes. I wouldn't want to get my Sunday go to meat suit all my stuff. Give me that axe. Now, Granny, you leave Leif be. I ain't after him, but if you're sending him out there to work, I'm going out there first and sharpen them stumps. <laughs> Bad hours work, Jethro. I'll say it ain't. Can we stop for vittles now, Uncle Jed? Quick as Leif gets through eating, Granny's feeding him first. Well, I thought Granny didn't like him. Well, it ain't that. It's just that it's dangerous for other folks to sit at a small table with Leif when he's eating. <laughs> just swing his knife and fork around right lively. <laughs> like a snare drummer in a possum day parade. Come on. How's it going, Granny? I'm going, Granny. Oh, cripple me a wet, eh? What crippled your knee? Well, the room it is, Granny. Now, if you was to give me a little bit of your rheumatism... Well, sir, I'm going to get out of the Move on. Well, Leif, you ready to go to work, are you? I ain't hardly wait to sail into it, Jet. <laughs> My working clothes on now. You notice the only place is working clothes is patched, don't you? Now, Granny, now, Granny. Maybe he's turned over a new leaf. Not unless there's food under it. What you got in the pan? Nothing. I was using it to dip grits and jowls for Leif. I couldn't keep ahead of him with a spoon. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe that one man could work like that. This one can. He's another jet club. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Hathaway, ma'am. I'm afraid you caught me resting a bit. <laughs> well, you deserved a rest. Why, from my place, it sounded like there were three or four men over here. Sawing, chopping, splitting logs. Well, that's just the way I work, sir. Oh, Mr. Craig, permit me to introduce Mr. Clavitt's next-door neighbor and the president of our bank, Mr. Drysdale. 
Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Crick. I ain't good enough to shake the hand of no bank president, sir. Now, don't be ridiculous. I'd be honored to shake your hand. It's all rough and full of calluses from working every day from sunup to sundown. Hi, <laughs> George. You and Jed Clampett are certainly cast from the same mold. Is that like this, Mr. Drysdale? Two peas in a pod. <laughs> Two birds and a mule's tail. <laughs> oh, well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll run along and say hello to Jethro. <laughs> Sit down, man. You must be exhausted. Shucks, no, Mr. Banker. <laughs> The way I work, I could go on like this for days. <laughs> Most days begin to catch up with me a mite. I ain't a young fella like you. Oh, I'm not so young. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Jed, you are. His exact words to me, he says, now you be sure and speak to young Mr. Drysdale about that job. <laughs> John? Dog, gone it, I wasn't gonna let that slip out. I was bound and determined not to. Well, you just forget it, Mr. Bank. It's Jed's idea, not mine. No, tell me all about it. Any idea of Jed Clampett's? I want to hear. Well, Jed, he had this notion that uh, you might could hire me to watch his money for him down to your bank. <laughs> oh, you mean like a guard or a night watchman? Night, night watchman. That sounds like it. <laughs> I said it before and I'll say it again. Having Leif Crick around will lead to nothing but trouble. You're right, Granny. That's a fact. Yes, ma'am. I know the Cricks better than any of you. I knew his paw and his paw before him. And the three of them put together ain't worth the powder it would take to blow them up. You're right, Granny. That's a fact. Yes, ma'am. Dave Crick is all talk. <laughs> Come bear in the hay wagon. Why, he'd mealy mouth you out of your eye teeth and sell them back to you. You're right, Granny. That's a fact. Yes, ma'am. When it comes to Lave Crick, I know what I'm talking about. And it won't do any good to argue with me. You're right. Let's all quit arguing with Granny so as we can eat. How can I dish the vittles if you don't hold your plates up? You're right. That's a fact. Yes, ma'am. There you are. I've just left your friend Lave Crick. What a hard-working, industrious, wonderful man he is. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> then it's settled. If Jed Clampett wants you as a night watchman at my bank, a night watchman you are. Uh, if you put it that way, I, I'm afraid I can't take the job. Oh, why not? Well, it makes me feel like I'd treat a possum with Jed's hound. Well, of course, I see your point. You don't want to feel, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, beholden to Jed, eh? That's right, Mr. Drysdale. I'm a poor man. I'm as rough as a cob and plain as dirt, but I got my pride. You are like Mr. Clampett. Like that, Jed and me. Two berries on a bush, all as was. <laughs> all right? I'll say it was my idea to hire you. Now, when do you want to start to work? How about tonight? <laughs> Can you get some rest? Rest? What's that? <laughs> Mr. Crick, men like you are few and far between. Thank you. Boss. <laughs> Tell you, Granny, the man is a veritable one-man sawmill. Cutting, chopping, splitting logs. <laughs> you see, Granny, old Leif has changed. Well, if he has, I'm going to jump in that pond with all of my clothes on. <laughs> in a bank, at night, with a gun, and $40 million. Yahoo! <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> see, Granny, I told you so. <laughs> Yahoo! And Granny, she was right. Granny. <laughs> Granny always was a woman of a word. <laughs> I fished your shoes out of the pond, Granny. I'll set them in the oven and let them dry out. Much obliged. Shoot. Bless you. <laughs> Of a job. A job? Leif Creek? That's right. I've changed my mind. Fetch my jug. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, sir. Old Lace going to work down to Mr. Drysdale Bank. The bank where you got your money? That's right. Jed, turning a rascal loose like that in a bank is like putting a hungry fox in a hen house. <laughs> Give the man a chance, Granny. Maybe it's a good thing for Lace to learn a trade. At least now folks will know what kind of work he's out of. <laughs> good. Want me to fetch your drink, Ethemel? No. This calls for a cool head and warm feet. <laughs> All ready to go, Mr. Crick. I so do appreciate you carrying me to the bank, boy. Glad to do it. If I stayed here, I'd have to dig a hole under the alum tree for Granny. And that there's hard work. I mean, W-O-R-K. Granny told me never to say that word around you. <laughs> Gets you to cussing. <laughs> You shouldn't do work like digging a hole. Fine, handsome boy like you. Shucks, it's no harder than cutting wood or plowing or clearing stumps. You ought to get yourself married, son. Then you wouldn't have to do woman's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comfortable, Mr. Crick. Mr. Drysdale will be right back. Thank you, ma'am. My, my, this must be the finest, most beautiful office in all the world. Oh, I'd hardly say that. Well, I reckon it must be you, ma'am. Pretty girl always makes a room pretty. Mr. Crick, you devil. <laughs> well, this is where you keep old Jed's money, is it? Yes, the Commerce Bank is very proud to be the guardian of the fortune belonging to your nearest and nearest friend. Like that, Jed and me. Two drips of dew, all as was. Yeah. Well, make yourself at home. I'll just have a few words with Jethro. A fine boy, Jethro. Yes. Looking for a wife. You and him would make a mighty handsome couple. Oh. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Places to keep Jed's money. <laughs> Good to see you, Jethro. <laughs> Mr. Crick, what are you doing? Giving thanks, Mr. Drysdale, sir. <laughs> Just giving thanks for a fine, generous, upstanding young man like yourself, letting a poor old razor back like me work in his fine bank, looking after the money of his nearest and dearest friend. Wait, Rick. You're a good man. Jed Clampett is wealthy in more ways than one. He is? Yes. <laughs> a friend like you is worth more than a million dollars. Oh, I do hope to be, sir. I do hope to be. <laughs> No account overgrow, big lazy. Granny, I told you, lazy's got a job. I'm talking about Jethro. <laughs> he promised to commence to dig me a root cellar. Well, Jethro is taking Leif to work. I'm going to start the root cellar for you. One bad apple will spoil the barrel. You mark my words. That Leif is going to turn those young'uns into a no account like yourself. Granny, Skipper and me's ready to help dig your root cellar. Ain't we, Skipper? Come on, Skipper, let's go. Don't look like them two are spoiled, man. Give them time. Well, Leif ain't gonna be around do much spoiling. I bet you Mr. Drysdale's got him working to beat the band right now. <laughs> I uh, didn't send your whiskers, did I? No, no, no not a bit. Hmm. Suppose Tom had to tie it into one of these. Is it all for me or do I give you half? No, I, I don't smoke them. Mr. Crick. Would you like me to send for my barber? Oh, no, no, no. I can smoke it by myself. <laughs> no, I thought you might want a shave and a haircut. My barber would be happy to come over here to my office and give you one. You mean right while I'm a setting here? All I have to do is call him. <laughs> well, that sure is handy. Huh? Yes, isn't it? I'll just keep that in mind if I ever should need a shave and a haircut. <laughs> yes. Well, right now, I'm anxious to get to work. That's the kind of a man I am. I'm not much of a one for setting around. Good. <laughs> what I have in mind for night watching old Jed's money 
is if you was to put it into some gunny sacks, I'd set on them sacks with my shotgun across my lap. <laughs> now, then you wouldn't have to worry at all. You could just go off someplace and sleep like a baby. <laughs> Mr. Crick, I'm afraid you have a slight misconception about the way we guard our money here at the bank. In the first place, Mr. Clapper's fortune isn't actually here. It ain't. No, oh, most of it ain't. It isn't. <laughs> and the money we do keep here is locked in a massive steel vault which cannot possibly be opened at night. Well, uh, that uh, kind of worries me, old Jed and me being like that. Well, you can stop worrying. And Mr. Clappett knows his money is perfectly safe, and he knows he can get all he wants any time he wants it. And is all that, huh? He doesn't even have to leave his house. Oh, my, that is handy. Oh, my, my, look at all that daylight out there. Why, I've got time to chop old Jed another quarter wood or two for sundown. You, sir, are the hardest working man I have ever seen. Habit of a lifetime, sir. <laughs> oh, you out there? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Trick. Uh, Jeff, I thought you were staying here. He's gone home. Oh, well, it's only five or six miles to old Jed's place. I guess I'll just run it. Good for my rheumatiz. <laughs> Chief, may I drive him home? Of course. <laughs> Fantastic man. A human dynamo. <laughs> yes, it was quite amusing. When the Clappets first arrived, Granny insisted the entire fortune be changed into silver so it could be buried in the backyard. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> buried in the backyard? I sure do thank you. You've been a great help to me. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> What a bundle of energy. <laughs> a fine example for Jethro. There you are, Jethro, and I'll get out there and commence digging your granny's root cellar. But Uncle Jed, Mr. Crick says I ain't supposed to do women's work. See what I told you? The bad apple is commencing to spoil the barrel. Jethro, you don't listen to what Mr. Crick tells you. You do what I tell you. Now, get on out there. I'll join you in a minute with the shovel. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh... Here comes the wormy wine sap now. I'm going to press my shotgun. Yes, sir. Stop your granny. Yes, sir. <laughs> but what you fixing to do, Jed? I was fixing to do a little digging out back yonder. Well, I'll do it for you. You can help if you're a man. No, 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 no. I want to do it all myself. I stopped her, Uncle Jed. Well, let's commence the digging under that big old elm out there. Oh, gone with Jethro. I want to do all the digging around here. Lee, the kind of digging that Granny wants done would take one man all day. Well, hard work never hurt nobody. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> it's a miracle. A plum miracle. <laughs> Oh, I said it last night, and I'll say it again this morning. If that lave crick has dug me a root cellar, I'll jump back into the cement pond with an anvil in my arms. I wouldn't say too much, Granny. Lave's been right full of surprises lately. He's nothing but... Enough, Granny? Yep. Fetch the anvil. We ain't got an anvil. I was counting on that. <laughs> Some coffee. <laughs> That's deep enough, Leif. Veer a little to the right. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> 